Hey, what is going on, guys? In this video today, we're going to be going over how to become a faster slash better editor in Fortnite. Editing is one of those skills in Fortnite that's becoming increasingly more important as time goes on. We've talked about this a bit before, but basically as players continue to get better and better, just building over someone and shooting them from high ground isn't going to cut it every time. Also, in close range scenarios, good players aren't going to just let you round a corner and pump shotgun them in the face. Now, to kill a lot of these really good enemies, you're going to need to use quick and smart edits in an aggressive way to create opportunities to deal damage. Editing is a skill that can feel really awkward and difficult at first, especially if you're playing on a controller, but trust me, it's something that you're going to need to learn. Also, the good news is you don't need to edit at the speed of Mongrel or make some of the crazy plays that Symphony does to be an effective editor. So my hope is that the tips in this video will help you guys with exactly that, and without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing we have to discuss when talking about editing in Fortnite is controller buying. If you want to be a really good editor in Fortnite, you practically need to have custom binds which allow you to edit instantly. If you're still playing on any kind of button layout where your editing is bound to the same button that pulls out your building menu, you're simply putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. That's basically the editing equivalent to still playing on Standard or Combat Pro when everybody else is already on Builder Pro. You can definitely still be good, but why intentionally make it more difficult on yourself? So I'm going to share with you guys three different custom binds that are good for editing on controller. The first one is, in my opinion, the best custom binds for any controller that has paddles, like a Scuff or an Xbox Elite. The second one is what I believe is a more simple layout for normal controller players that allows you to instant edit. And the third one is another one for normal controller players, but these binds are going to be a little more odd slash unique, but they're probably the best overall normal controller binds for editing. Alright, so starting off with the binds for players with any kind of functioning paddles on the back of their controllers. These are the binds that I personally use with my Xbox Elite controller. You're going to want to bind edit to A on Xbox, X on PS4, then bind your jump button to right on the D-pad, and then program one of your paddles to also be right on the D-pad. So that basically means that you don't actually jump by pressing right on the D-pad, because that would be horrible, plain and simple. You jump by pressing one of your paddles on the back of your controller. I personally have it as the lower paddle on the left side of my controller, but that part is totally up to you. Then, I would keep reset edit as what it's defaultly on, and you can make confirm edit whatever you want as well. Now we move on to the first and more normal binds for normal controller players. You're going to want to bind edit to Y on Xbox, triangle on PS4, pull out your pickaxe to write on the D-pad, keep reset edit as pressing down on right stick, and then I personally would make confirm edit also be Y on Xbox, triangle on PS4, just because I feel like it would be smoother for most players, but that just comes down to preference like with the last binds, and you can do whatever you want honestly. Now, these binds are awesome because they aren't all that different from just the base Builder Pro. If you've been using Builder Pro for a while now, you can probably switch to that layout and be totally fine with it after a few days maybe. However, the problem with this layout in terms of editing is that by binding edit to Y slash triangle, you need to take your finger off of the right thumbstick anytime you want to make any kind of edit. If you don't understand why that's a problem, here's why. Ideally, to edit quickly, you want to open the editing menu and then immediately select the squares you want to edit, and that's obviously done by holding down right trigger slash R2 and then moving around with the right stick. But there's going to be a slight delay in that action when you're using those binds. That's because to initiate an edit, you take your finger off of the right stick to press Y slash triangle, and then you need to bring that finger back onto right stick to select squares. I hope I made that somewhat understandable for you guys, but if not, just trust me. Y slash triangle edit is really good because you won't have any in-game edit delay, but it isn't perfect because you'll have a slight delay due to your finger movement. So 
So that's why I'm going to talk about a second normal controller bind option that is pretty much as perfect as it gets for fast editing. You bind edit to left stick, confirm edit to left stick, keep reset edit as right stick, and then turn sprint by default on in the in-game settings. You can do whatever you want with your binds other than that. This is perfect because it means that you're never taking your finger off of left stick, right stick, or right trigger at any point while editing. This means that you'll be able to edit as fast as possible with no in-game edit delay and also no edit delay due to finger movement. However, these binds only work with sprint by default on, which is something that I'm guessing the vast majority of you guys don't use. It definitely isn't a bad setting and some people even argue that it's beneficial but it's definitely something that's going to take a decent amount of getting used to. And also, I would personally strongly recommend that no matter which binds you choose, you should have editing mode aim assist off. It's basically just a crutch that makes it more difficult to edit quickly. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about custom controller binds and how they relate to editing. The next topic I want to cover in this video regarding improving your editing are editing courses and some other general tips. Creative mode editing courses are hands down the best way to both practice and improve your editing ability in Fortnite. The main reason why they work so well is due to the fact that editing is a mechanical skill where you're always dealing with the same inanimate object. Editing a wall in creative mode works the exact same way as editing a wall in a regular battle royale game mode. Therefore, if you can get the muscle memory for every edit down in creative, you shouldn't have too much trouble incorporating it into regular games. And a nice perk about creative mode editing courses is that unlike the creative mode aim practice courses, the editing ones actually work the same exact way on PC and console. There are literally thousands of different editing practice courses out there, so I'll quickly mention some of my favorites and put the codes to them in the description below, but just keep in mind there are so many more options available as well. Mongrel's course is really good, but since one of the recent updates, it's a little bit broken now. Apparently, you no longer spawn at the correct point every time, so sometimes you're going to need to actually start the creative game and then break through a ceiling to get to the actual intended starting point. But other than that, it's an awesome course that's used by a ton of pros, and everybody competes to see who can get the fastest time. I believe the world record right now is somewhere around 2 minutes and 30 seconds. And I'll also drop the code to two other good editing courses by a YouTuber named Can Duke. They're both considerably longer and more in-depth than Mongrel's course, but they're also really solid options as well. They all offer a nice mix of wall, ramp, floor, and pyramid edits that you can kind of freestyle with them and learn as you go. Now, a big thing that I want to emphasize about practicing editing and just editing in-game in general is that you really want to prioritize consistency over speed. If you guys watch me play, you'll probably notice that I'm not really an overly fast editor. However, I still feel that because I'm really consistent with my edits, I'm still able to make some really nice edit plays. It's plain and simple really hard to be both consistent and incredibly fast when editing on controller. There are definitely people that can do it, but honestly, I feel much like having insane aim. Being able to edit at super speed takes a certain amount of natural talent to be able to do. A really common mistake I see when it comes to editing is that people just flick around their right stick like crazy and just kind of hope they end up selecting the correct squares to actually do the correct edit. That's a sign that you're focusing too much on speed and not enough on actually consistently getting the edit correct. And just think about it like this, messing up and then having to redo an edit is going to take you so much longer than just taking maybe an extra 0.2 seconds to get it right the first time around. Unless you're an expert, I would probably avoid flick editing in general, and more so focus on actually dragging your right stick to select the correct squares. Only once you've truly mastered consistently getting edits correct at a solid speed, should you then specifically focus on getting faster. And I don't remember where exactly I heard this tip, but someone said that a way to improve consistency is by really putting emphasis on making sure you get the first and last square of the edit correct. The logic behind it is that those are the two squares that people mess up on the most, and if you get the beginning and ending ones correct, odds are the ones in between them will be as well. 
And once you feel like you've mechanically mastered all the edits you've practiced to the best of your ability, that's when you should really start trying to make edit plays in actual games. Editing is a lot like building in the sense that step one is mastering all the mechanics like fast 90s, ramp rushes, and pyramiding and boxing players. Then step two is learning how and when to use those mechanics in real live in-game scenarios. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. I want to know how you guys feel about yourself as editors in Fortnite. And quick follow-up question, if you're someone that plays on a high ping, did the recent editing update that made it a client-side feature actually make editing feel better for you? Let me know. Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.